Hi, I'm Rajiv Sathyal. I'm a comedian and a host. I am Indian. And I'm American. So this show will tell the story of Indians in America. I live right here in Los Angeles, the home of Warner Brothers, Disney, and now Funny Indian Productions. My guest picks a game and we play it. So enjoy. What do you bring to the table? Welcome, everybody, to What Do You Bring to the Table? I'm your host, Rajiv Sathyal, and I have the honor and pleasure of sitting here with Aparna Nanshirla. I said that right, I think. Yes, you did. That's good. I, I don't want to be overly Indian. I wanted to say I said that right, I think, because I'm sure most <laughs> yeah. people say that, right? So I wanted to get in there. So we're going to be playing uh, Jenga today, you know, because it's a table game, and we're going to sort of do that as I, you know, ask you questions about your life and who you are. Great. We're going to get to the bottom <laughs> of that. So. Um, you can make the first move if oh, you'd like. Wow. Yeah, I know, seriously. Mm. So see what, uh, I'm going to just follow your strategy since I've been really... I don't really... think I have a strategy, I know. but I will try. I'm going to knock it over in the I know. first, uh, I know. I feel like I, I don't... have too much coffee and I... Yeah, we're both kind of shaking. My fingers are going to... Wow, this is a solid Jenga tower. Yeah, it's the first time. It hasn't <laughs> oh, no. been broken in. It it's feels like, a like it hasn't been broken. New pair of shoes. I don't know if technically that's illegal to go that's that fine. close to the top, but I did. That's uh, that's fine by me. So uh, let's start at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Where were you born? I was born outside. Uh, well, actually, I was born in Washington D.C., but I grew up in the suburbs in Northern Virginia. Northern Virginia, mm -hmm. like near. Um, Sort of Arlington or like? Yeah, my yeah. parents live in Arlington now, but I grew up in a town called McLean. Virginia. McLean, mm -hmm. very cool. Where do you live now? You don't have to give us your exact address, but. I live in New York and I just uh, moved to Brooklyn recently from Queens. Wow, okay, mm -hmm. you moved up in the world. My memories of childhood are a little bit spotty. I think I remember my sister pushing me in a stroller. Okay, have that changed? I thought you were just like down the stairs. Okay. No, but me, it was at the top of our driveway, and I told her to let go, and then my stroller fell over and I fell out. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah. So she did it. She did it to obey you, or she did it out, like out of spite, like if you want me to let no, go. No, I but... told her. I was like yelling at her to do let it. Let go. And yeah. Then you fell. And then I hit the garage door and I fell. Oh, wow. That's pretty, yeah. I can see remembering that. How old were you? I don't remember. Like it was last week. Now I don't know if it actually happened or not. When is the first time you had it in your mind to do stand-up? I mean, the very first time I tried it was just some friends and I went to an open mic near my house like when we were all home from college for the summer and it was more just like a cheap thing to go do and hang out at the same time just like right. go watch this open mic and like you know grab a, grab a beer or something and mm -hmm. then I think uh, we noticed that not everyone who went up was like at a professional level and I didn't really know <laughs> open mics what open mics were right, before right, that right. and so sure. we I tried it and then I think I was like oh I think I might try this again. It went pretty well. It went like better than I think I expected. Yeah. Because you kind of expect, well, I expected the worst. Part of it for me was like I was, I had taken time off from school because I had been like having some uh, eating related issues and then I was like diagnosed with depression and I mm. think it was like a weird phase where I just like gotten on antidepressants and then was like in this weird zone of like, 
everything's great and like I finally feel like the way everyone else feels or something right. where I think I was willing to take more risks than I would have before that. That's so do you think yeah. that was the medication or was it some kind of therapy? I think it was at least part like a placebo effect of feeling like supercharged up on yeah. this new thing. Yeah. yeah. I can't see you supercharged up. <laughs> well, yeah. I just mean it's like just a funny I, no, I know. Of a I just mean up. like my mood had like spiked, I think, cuz I think right. that's normal when you go on antidepressants for sure. the first time where there's like a bump and then it levels out, but it was like, I think I was in this like more euphoric zone than, yeah. yeah. Than usual. Yeah. That's okay, no that's, and you've been pretty open about talking about uh, depression and anxiety. Mm -hmm. Do they always go hand in hand? Are people depressed and, and not anxious? Or? I think some people deal more with one than the other, mm -hmm. but I think they're definitely two sides of a similar coin. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I think, Depression is sort of the uh, the loss of all affect. It's not even really sadness. It's kind of like feeling like no nothing. Yeah. Yeah. And then anxiety, in a sense, is like all the feelings yeah. at once. <laughs> wow, that's a good way of putting it. I never yeah. thought of that. Yeah, I mean, it's cool. not like it's pleasurable, but it is like you're scared, you're nervous, you're you're like irritated. Like it's yeah. a lot of just intent it's like turning the volume all the way up on yeah, yeah. No, like it goes up to 11. yeah <laughs> I've, I've, heard, I've heard that before where it's just like anxiety is, is nervousness plus excitement but I've not heard anyone say it's all the emotions at once which, yeah well, that's a good way of uh, well it's like it. a lot of noise it's like usually you can filter out yeah what you need to focus on and it's right. just like everything at once yeah yeah it's like all the colors and none of the colors mm -hmm. it's like white mm -hmm. and then black kind so of. yeah in that sense it feels like they're part of a, the same circle, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Has anyone ever said anything to you that, that stayed with you? Someone you didn't know? Like a, like a comment or a, I mean it could be good, it could be anything. I mean it's just sort of a, an insightful, because I, I feel like people in your position do get, there's I, just so much noise. Yeah, I mean I think it's always very humbling when someone's like, oh like I really, liked how you talked about like depression or anxiety and it like really made me feel less alone or like helped me with this bad day I was having like that always feels very like yeah you're like oh man I didn't even think that I could have that effect yeah, yeah. I'm glad I do what I do like that's why yeah. we do what we do at the end of the day it's still hard to really take that on and be like, I made someone's day better. But like, it's really nice <laughs> There's when- There's a fine they, line between yeah, it yeah. and But it is like nice when people say that. I think when I started, I definitely felt more like a leaf in the wind of like, I didn't even really have clear goals. Like I was sort of like, I'll just keep doing it and then see what happens. Um, career-wise, but now I feel like I think I'm trying to be better about like setting goals and being like, this is what I want to accomplish or this is what I want to do next. Just because sometimes when you're more just like flying by the seat of your pants, like it can make it harder to really mark progress or mm -hmm. like feel like you have any kind of trajectory. So it can be good in the sense that you're adaptable, but it can also lead to a lot of indecision. So I've sure. been trying to be a little bit more set in like what I want and how to get there. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you want and how do you get there? Mm, right now I think I, I kind of want to maybe be able to develop a show mm -hmm. um, and work on it and preferably with like a friend or something because I think I just like collaborating with people that yeah. who I enjoy. Um, both like comedically and just like as people so i think that would be that would be a great thing but yeah maybe write a book or something too mm -hmm. yeah no i mean you're obviously would you say that it was it's been twitter that has kind of broken you i mean obviously you've become much more a, a name in the last few years and it seems like on all those lists of people whom to follow mm -hmm, uh mm -hmm. aparna Nancherla's name keeps coming up over and over and it's uh, at a per napkin right yeah, is that, yeah. am i saying it right yeah, yeah. Per napkin. Well, what did, totally. how did that come about it's um, just uh I think I joined Twitter before people were really using it as a self-promotional tool yeah. to that extent, the extent that they are now. So I just 
had sort of a silly handle, yeah. like the way people's AOL addresses would be. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Kind of crazy. It wasn't just something like your first name, yeah, your last yeah, name. Yeah, 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 exactly. exactly. Yeah. And now it is, but I feel like I went the right route because I don't think people would have been able to figure out how to spell my last name. So I think it's better true. to go. Maybe with, just good with uh, with, with napkin. This. Yeah. Which is which is good. Would you say you made it? Mm, I think in the most like basic sense, yes, in that I think my initial goal was just to be able to do comedy full time. So sure. in that sense, I've made that goal. I think beyond that, it is kind of nebulous because it's like, are you measuring that in terms of fame or money mm -hmm. or, um, you know, just like popularity? I don't know, I yeah. was wondering. <laughs> I was wondering who started it okay. was. Sorry, okay. It could be my turn. I just okay, no, go, go ahead. I just go ahead, forgot. Go ahead. Um, we're, we're measuring it in Jenga turns, I guess. Yeah. So, yeah. so anyway, I, I totally interrupted you. You were saying no, no, no. But but yeah, I think it's in that sense. It, it's like, what are your, what are you really gaining fulfillment from? Because mm -hmm. um, for me, I think my only real goal was to be able to do it. Uh, as a career. Full time as yeah, a career. And yeah. so that's been accomplished. Mm -hmm. So in that sense you feel Yeah. yeah. I think anything beyond that is like obviously very fortunate and, and cool, but I don't think I'm like I'm not I haven't made it till I reach this level of like knownness or something. Yeah. 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 No, I think that's a, that's sort of an internal way of looking at it, which I think is probably the best way to look at mm -hmm, it. So mm -hmm. What would it mean to, to pull a you if somebody said, wow, she just pulled an Aparna? What would that be? Oh, maybe not showing up to a party. <laughs> so like you said you were going and yeah. then you decided not to go? Yeah, now I'm pretty good about just being like, I'll try to stop by and then yeah. I don't feel like I made you didn't any really commit. Yeah. yeah. And it used to be back in the day, because I'm old, people yeah. would call or email if they couldn't come, right? Oh, and, right, yeah. And then it, then it sort of shifted to people will maybe ping you while you're at the party. And that's oh, really right. a good move because you're happy. Right. And you can't really get mad in front of a bunch of people. So it's right. really good. Do you think move. people's excuses have gotten worse? Yes. <laughs> I think that's I think that's that's exactly and how they're delivered. What is the worst excuse you've ever heard? What is the worst excuse I've ever heard? I mean, I think the whole notion of I just passed out last night oh. is really lame. It's like I was tired. Yeah, who passes out on the couch? <laughs> we all, I mean, I try now to not go to bed with my phone, uh, but we still, you still have some notion that you're going to go to sleep. Right. It's not like you're a child. You don't just <laughs> fall asleep and you're gone for nine hours. I mean, we'll fall asleep for like 10, 15 minutes and you will do a power nap. But oh, I passed. Oh, you mean you passed out like you got up from the couch right. with your phone, brushed your teeth, changed into your PJs, put the covers over your head. Oh, and then I passed out. Yeah, it's weird that that happened. They probably felt themselves falling asleep, but then debated whether they could still rally and then just gave in to it. That's that that I would that I would love if somebody just came out and said that. Or it just pull a Larry David or something and just say I just really didn't want to come. Right. I would respect that a lot. Who has it figured out? Do you think of anyone whether it's comedy or life or anything is, is there oh. anyone that jumps to to mind as wow, this person has it figured out? It's weird cuz I always think people who like meditate a lot and stuff and are pretty spiritual, at least in the sense of having alone time with their minds on a regular basis, feel like the most zen. But then I feel like there are a lot of people that I don't think are that evolved that seem to really be into meditation. And I'm like, if they're really into it, I don't know if I... It's defacing the brand of meditation. <laughs> yeah. You're like, wait, hang on a second. You yeah. Meditate. It makes me think that there is like a level of spiritual or new ageness where it's just like an excuse to not care about other people's <laughs> <laughs> like it's just about being into themselves yeah but they spin it as being like detached yeah yeah <laughs> really like they're they've, just they've like reached a, a higher plane a jerk yeah you're just you're just kind of a dick actually yeah so um are things in the world getting better or worse Feels like they're getting worse right now, but 
Maybe. Since when? Since the election? I think, yeah, overtly since the election, but I think a lot of those things had already been happening before and now we're just more aware of them. Yeah, it just exposed the problems that, the underlying problems that were there. Yeah. Kind of like when Jenga finally falls, it'll be, <laughs> right. you know, sort of gradually it's but suddenly. It's a metaphor, It's yeah. a metaphor mm -hmm. for this world in which we're living. This is probably a bad answer, but the fun, I think the hardest I've ever laughed was when I was like eight years old and I saw Weekend at Bernie's 2 at a party. That's definitely the wrong answer. It is. Yeah, it's yeah. definitely, I've never seen the movie, but it's the wrong answer. What guilty pleasure, like food-wise, what's your, what's your guilty pleasure? That you'll never, it doesn't matter how, how big you become, like Fergie said, just don't want to talk about. Is there a place or like a thing that you, man, I'm just never giving that up? Probably like fancy coffee is my guilty pleasure. Mm. Cause I feel like I do pay too much for it, but it's just like, I still want to buy it. If you had to be convicted of a white collar crime, what would it be? Um, Not like breaking and entering, something that's more, you know. Not paying my overdraft fees. <laughs> is that, I guess that is a crime. Which animals have you ridden? Ridden? Yeah. A horse? Okay, well that's an animal. I think that's it though. That's it? Not like a camel or? Oh no. Or a uh, elephant or a Elephant or... maybe. Yeah, see, maybe. I'm telling you, it's possible. Maybe an Sounds elephant. Sounds like a stupid question, but it really is. Just those two, I think. Um, are you familiar with the quote, the best paintings have already been painted? Mm-hmm. How do you think that relates to stand-up? Do you think the best stand-up has been done? Do you think it's being done now? Do you think it will be done? I think, you know, every topic has already been covered, but I think stand-up is also very much a snapshot of where we are in time, so mm -hmm. I don't think it's fair to say everything has been covered as it is now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so you think it's the same caliber that it's been? Has it, was yeah. It, is there a dip? Is this sort of a golden age? Like, we'll look back at this time as better, or has it all, is it always just, it's just always good? And Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I, I always have problem with art criticism, because I mm -hmm. don't think the purpose of art is to be good. This is gonna knock it over, almost certainly. This is a bad move. This is a really bad, but I think I once know. you start going, it's over, right? I have to go for it now? Yeah. Yeah, I that was a bad, it. really stupid idea. I don't know. I'm not convinced that's the end. My engineering degree will tell me that this was not. Oh, yeah. There it is. <laughs> well, you called it. Yeah, I get, yeah there's, some, there's some points for calling it. Mm -hmm. I want to thank Aparna Mantrilla for joining us on What Do You Bring to the Table? And uh, I just wanted to leave by asking you, you know, do you have any advice for the kids out there? Do you have anything that, you know, here's a mic for 30 seconds. What, what do you <laughs> shout to the world? Um, I, it's uh, not very glamorous, but I would say just <laughs> keep going. Yeah, that's that's what we did with the game. Uh -huh. I know, seriously, don't be afraid of making mistakes. Maybe maybe that's the analogy to, to what we have. And build build your own, build your right? Own build your own way, you know? That's yeah. it. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank we you for really having me. We really appreciate your uh, coming, taking time out of your very busy schedule to mm -hmm. join us on What Do You Bring to the Table. I've been your host, Rajiv, and I still am. <laughs> Next week on What Do You Bring to the Table? You're very good at this. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Did you grow up playing ping pong? I did, but I think Indians just grew up playing ping pong. I think we always, um, we either had a ping pong table. Yeah. Or we had friends that had a ping pong table. Yeah. Not a, not a billiards table. Not no, a pool no, table. No, no, that no, was no, too. No, no. That it was, was like too. your kids were like sort of in junior high or high school or whatever, and then like you were like, we will get a ping pong table in the rec room. Right. Like having a rec room yeah. and having a ping pong table was kind of the quintessential like we've arrived yeah, we've done kind it. of thing, you know?